I don't know what these books do to a person, but it can't be good for your body. <laughs> Dare I say, the most boring book I've read all year. Before I get into the romance, hello, it is a big flannel weather again which is my favorite type of weather. So I think this is the perfect time to cozy up, get a little cup of tea for ourselves and talk about the books that I read in the past few months so I can tell you what my thoughts were. Hello, my name is Leonie and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm drinking a chai tea. This the season, this the season. The chai, the spiced chai, it's time. How are you all doing? I want to know what have you been obsessed with lately i for one am currently in a deep deep void i've been sucked into it this this fandom this love for a tv show that i haven't felt since i was like 19 years old maybe <laughs> and it's good omens my gosh i cannot i cannot explain to you properly how much this tv show has just buried itself deep into my brain. You open my TikTok, you think you're gonna see normal stuff? No, it's just edit after edit after edit after thing that's gonna make you cry about Good Omens, the TV show. So I just wanted to share that. I just need to throw it out into the world that um, if season three doesn't come quickly to resolve the pain that the end of season two instilled in my heart, I might die, so. There's that. I think this is me just like letting you know that I'm probably gonna be reading a lot of Neil Gaiman in the upcoming months. <laughs> Cause the TV show Good Omens is based on the book Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. He also writes on the show and I have barely read anything by Neil Gaiman so I should probably read more of him. And I think this is the time. Anyway, that was my little tangent because I needed to just like spill my love for that TV show. Okay. <laughs> so the past few months I've been kind of continuing my search for good fantasy romance. It's like the, this, <laughs> I want to call it a new genre. It's not a new genre. It seems new. It's like the new it thing that everyone's talking about on TikTok and on Bookstagram. It's fantasy romance, romantasy. Oh, fantasy books with a lot of romance in it, which is just like, that has existed since forever. I feel like ever since we've been reading our young adult fantasies, there has always been like really strong romance subplots. But now we're kind of, because the audience I think kind of grew up, we're bringing that need, that demand for a lot of romance in our fantasy to the adult fantasy sphere. And that has kind of caused this like new little trend of like, oh, we're actually really looking for adult fantasies that also have a very strong romance subplot in them, including me, I love that. So I read some and they weren't good. Do I start with that? You know what? We'll just start with that. Okay, the first one that I wanna talk about, let's just, I'm just gonna start with like the most famous one. I read The Bridge Kingdom, one of the most popular fantasy romance books. It is widely recommended because of course it has literally the most perfect and typical but still perfect premise and that is that we follow our main character Lana who has been trained all her life to seduce and kill the king of like a rivaling kingdom and then she has to like go marry him so she can kill him and then obviously they fall in love. So it's like perfect enemies to lovers setup. I've been burnt by this setup before. You guys all remember The Shadows Between Us? Very similar concept, got me super hyped up, and then it was extremely disappointing. And yet still, I am looking for a book that does this concept well. Because The Bridge Kingdom, when I first started reading this book, I was like, oh my god, I'm blown away by this. It was giving The Cruel Prince, but for adults. But first, a word from this video's sponsor, which is G2A. One of my main hobbies, aside from reading, is playing video games, and G2A is one of the largest marketplaces where you can buy games and digital products. Whether you like to play on your PC or Nintendo Switch like I do, or have another console, they have games for everyone. It's really easy to see who you're buying from and in which country the keys are available, so if you would like to check out G2A, and their games. The link will be in my description. I guess spoilers for like the first chapter, but we start out in this like really cool 
desert area and our main character has been raised there her entire life with like her 10 sisters or something and they've been trained their entire lives to become killing machines and seduction machines so that one of them will be chosen to marry like King Aaron of like a rivaling kingdom to kill him and a day has arrived that their father the king is going to decide which one of the sisters is going to be chosen to be the one to seduce the king and I guess the other nine have been raised all their life to become perfect temptresses and killing machines and then all of that is just gonna go to waste we're not gonna think about the concept and the logic of this too much <laughs> and we don't really know what's gonna happen to them like are they gonna be killed we don't really know so our main character Lana is like I'm actually not sure if I'm gonna be chosen and I'm a little bit afraid of what's gonna happen if I don't get chosen so she just kills all of her sisters and then she's like well well dad they're all gone you're gonna have to choose me and I read that and I was like oh my gosh the tone it's been set the vibe it's there I'm here for it. And then very quickly we realized that she didn't actually kill them. She just like sedated them. And for some reason they didn't realize this. And I was like, okay, so we're backpedaling, we're backpedaling. You can even ask yourself how apparently 12 sisters, 12 sisters who've been raised all their life to become absolute killing machines are just poisoned like that without them noticing. Red flags are starting to go off in my head. I'm like, I think maybe this book isn't as good as I think that it's going to be. And then our main character, Lana, goes off to marry King Aaron so that she can kill him. And then she meets the king's sister and just doesn't recognize him. Which again, I'm like, so you were raised your entire life to learn everything about the king, to learn everything about this rivaling kingdom, raised for like 20 years to become like the perfect killer and you didn't know he had a sister? You don't recognize the sister. Questions. Questions are going off in my head. And that is kind of the whole vibe of this book. I didn't hate it, don't get me wrong. It's just like, oh, it's just like, Mrs. DeMarc constantly for me personally. It's a fun book, you know, I finished it, which is already something because I started listening to it kind of skeptical. I was like, I wasn't sure if I was going to love it because again, I, I tend to have like a hard time with like fantasy romances that are very, very hyped. So I was like, let me just give it a try. And I did still finish it, which is a good sign. This book was very enjoyable. Okay, before I get into the romance, let me tell you what I liked about this book so you can kind of maybe think for yourself if you're gonna like this as well. It's a cool concept, okay? We have a badass main character. She's an assassin. She knows how to seduce people, get people to do what she wants them to do. Okay, she's smart. She's always playing tricks on people. It's very enjoyable as a concept. Even if it's not particularly super well executed, it's still very, very fun. And I really like the world that this takes place in. You know, like she has been brought up in like like this desert but the rivaling kingdom that she is in is the bridge kingdom and there's like a lot of water and there is these bridges that are extremely important for like how the country works and all the merchandising and all that stuff it, it was interesting it was different from what i'm used to it was a very unique world and i did like that this is the kind of romance fantasy where i would say it's a fantasy book first but just has a very strong romantic subplot and you can tell that the plot happens to aid the romance you know certain things happen in the plot where you're kind of suspending your disbelief because you know they're just happening so that like kind of rom a romantic scene can happen but other than that i would say the action and like the political tension that exists between these different kingdoms takes the foreground you know how every single book that has this like premise of like oh the main character has to kill the king of the rivaling kingdom there always needs to be an answer to of course the question of like wait what's gonna go down you know as a reader that she's not gonna end up killing him because it's a romance and every book that has this premise has to kind of find a solution to 
how that's gonna end. Like, why is she not gonna end up killing him? And I really liked how this book took that on. I don't want to say how, because that's kind of a spoiler. It had an interesting solution to that problem that I enjoyed seeing explored. Now, the romance. And this is where I'm going to rant a little bit. Reading this book has kind of made me realize why so many very popular romance or romance fantasy books just don't really work for me. It is just one of those romances where the two main characters fall in love simply because the man is hot? <laughs> We get dual point of view, which I love. I love seeing the pining from both sides, but that didn't help me at all in understanding why these two people would fall for each other. Like there are so many moments where it's like clear, like, oh, they have to touch each other. Oh, he's saving her. Oh, she's saving him. Oh, they, they're constantly saving each other's lives. And there are so many moments where it's like, oh, they have to hold each other. And it's very clear that they're supposed to be like romantic tension. And I just didn't feel it because I just genuinely didn't understand why these two people fell in love with each other. And I know I'm in the minority because this is a very popular romance book, but I think it's because this is just one of those romance books where the entirety of the romance and the tension just hinges on the fact that we as readers are supposed to like self-identify with the female main character Lara and then the male guy is just like a hot dude with black hair. <laughs> that we're supposed to swoon over and therefore you're supposed to just buy that these two are in love with each other but I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I genuinely could not tell you anything about King Aaron. He's tall, he has black hair and he, we get a lot of descriptions of his muscles. Oh and he's like not mean to our main character. Like he lets her make her own choices. Wow! I only love a romance if I can really see why these two people, these two characters specifically have their like own unique dynamic that makes you realize like, oh, these two, they have a chemistry, you know, they have a kind of banter, a kind of back and forth between them that works specifically for them. I don't personally need to find the characters attractive. That doesn't matter. What matters, what I love seeing, is just seeing these two characters be perfect for each other and have on-screen chemistry. Reading this book felt like watching a rom-com where the two actors just don't have any on-screen chemistry and I'm just kind of supposed to believe that they're in love, but I just don't see it because the actors don't have chemistry. That's kind of how I felt with this book. And if I look at all the romances that I love, I notice that they're always the type of books where there's a very strong focus on like two characters individually fleshing them out as people and just seeing how they both kind of collide and have this great tension with each other. Whereas I feel like a lot of romance books, including this one, don't really do that and it's more of a I guess kind of like a wish fulfillment thing where you identify with the main girl and then the guy is really hot and then that that's it and it's not my thing I don't like it rarely have I read a book where I so strongly just did not understand why these two would be in love with each other that's not true I had the exact same thing with the next book we're gonna talk about but yeah the one thing that I will give this book is that it was a really good slow burn and the author was very good at like ranking of the tension and then just like just not giving it to you so that was well done so overall I would say I did have fun with this book but I'm definitely not gonna remember much of this. It's not it's not gonna be one of those books that's really gonna stick with me. Moving on to the other, I guess, romance fantasy that I read. I read Chloe Gong's new book, Immortal Longings. I took off the dust jacket because it's such a shame because the cover is really nice, but I spilt cider on it. <laughs> And honestly, the worst thing that you can spill on a book is like a sugary drink. So now the cover is like, it's like really crumpled. You can hear it. But this is the cover, which I, I really like the cover. Immortal Longs by Chloe Gong. Chloe Gong, you might know her name because she is the best-selling author of These Violent Delights. 
and after that also Foul Lady Fortune. So she's written a lot of very best-selling young adult fantasy novels and this is her first adult novel and I was very excited about that. I dare I say the most boring book I've read all year. Not the worst book, by far not the worst book. But definitely the most boring ones. Cause because really bad books are are rarely boring, right? This one was just like if I describe the concept of this book, you're gonna think Leonie, how could this ever be boring? Cause this takes place in kind of like a um, think cyberpunk city meets Roman architecture incredibly cool urban futuristic setting and an incredibly interesting magic system that revolves around body jumping so characters can use their chi and like project it into another person and then take over their bodies that is body jumping and it's something that our main characters do all the time and you constantly see them just like jumping back and forth using different bodies to get away from situations um, and just use it to their advantage and it's incredibly cool i think if i'm just saying this to you right now there's already like so many cool scenarios going through your head like so many questions popping up there's so much that you could do <laughs> with a magic system like that We'll get to that. The plot revolves around this like to the death tournament that is organized by the king, Hunger Games style, except like not nearly as interesting. <laughs> this whole story is the Anthony and Cleopatra retelling and I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't, I don't know anything about that story and not knowing about that I don't think really um, negatively impacted my enjoyment of the book. And we follow multiple characters as they're kind of on their quest to win the tournament but really what they want to do is just kill the king because they hate the king because the country is really poor and the city just has like a lot of wealth inequality the quality of life isn't great so they want to kill the king to hopefully make a better world there are like two main problems that i have with this book the first one is that the characters i could not tell you a single thing about them they have no personality like vague vague personalities you know we have like our main female character kaya she's very cool she's an assassin she just kills everyone and that's kind of it and then we have anton who i guess is kind of cocky and a bit flirty and then that's kind of it most of these characters really don't go beyond very very like small surface level little character traits couldn't tell you anything else about them as a character reader that immediately made me not care about the plot. I really think that this is a plot focused book. If you are a plot reader, maybe you would enjoy this book a lot more than I did. And because of that, we have kind of the same problem with the romance for me personally, where I just really did not understand why these two people were into each other. And the concept is so cool. Clearly Chloe Gong knows how to write tension between characters. She really took like the fact that she has an adult novel now to write like a little bit more spice into her books. And she does it really well, I think. It has all the, you know, like classic enemies to lovers, angst, fighting, daggers to throats, all the things that I love and I just didn't feel anything for it because I just couldn't get myself to care about these characters because I didn't know who these characters were and I sure as hell did not understand why they were into each other and I sure sure as hell did not understand why at the end of the book they say like I love you to each other and I was like why? <laughs> why? <sighs> I'm getting out of breath. I'm so sorry. Again, it's one of those romance fantasies where the fantasy is first, but then there's a romance subplot that is important enough to really kind of drive the plot as well. But the second main thing that bothered me about this book is that it just felt like the author hadn't properly built her magic system or at least didn't properly utilize just the myriad possibilities that you have with a cool magic system such as body jumping. There's like little bits sprinkled in there like we are told that the concept of having a body is very very different in this world like people don't really hold that much value to their bodies because they can switch bodies so easily but at the same time 
we know that not everyone has the gene to body jump. We also know that it's illegal and we also know that some people just aren't very good at it unlike our main character so uh, most people have a lot of trouble body jumping but then we're also supposed to believe that everyone just sees their bodies as disposable doesn't make sense to me we constantly just see our main characters use random people's bodies to just like run around town or fight in or when they're getting attacked like people just constantly die because you just jump to someone else's body when you're fighting and then when someone's about to give you the killing blow, you just jump to another body. And then the original person is just like sat there, fatally wounded, and they can't really do much about it <laughs> because not everyone can jump and not everyone can jump well. But then we're all supposed to believe that it's all fine because people don't really care about their bodies anyway. Clearly you would expect a kind of class system to appear between like skilled body jumpers and people who can't body jump, but this is just not explored at all. Also just the general philosophy behind body jumping. We get like little bits of like the main characters having to kind of adjust to like the new body that they're in and you know, like the height and the strength of that body. But that's about as far as it goes, let alone that the author thinks about the question of like <laughs> what it's like to inhabit, you know, basically a different brain. I would say it's philosophy 101, the question of like, oh, if you inhabit a different brain, are you still the same person? That is one of those like basic philosophy questions that I think everyone gets in contact with at some point in their life. So the fact that we have a magic system where people just constantly inhabit other people's brains and we don't even touch on that question once. Missed opportunity. But no, instead we just get our main characters constantly exploiting random people's bodies for their own gain without consequences. <laughs> and I'm just like, I feel like so much is missing here. I feel like there are so many questions that needed to be addressed if you're gonna write a book with body jumping as the magic system. But instead of getting like a super interesting fantasy story, we just got a fantasy story that felt like the author was just, well, jumping <laughs> between hoops to avoid these questions. And every time like a little ethical question popped up, you would see her just kind of like write it off as like, oh, that's just normal here. That's fine. We're not gonna think about it. It's normal because people jump bodies all the time. Let, let's not think about it. And I found that that was a really big shame. I don't think I would have finished this book if it wasn't for the fact that it is this month's Patreon book club. So if you wanna know like my in-depth spoilery thoughts, we're gonna have a discussion on my Patreon about it. But overall, the book has a few fun plot twists that I, I was entertained by, but other than that, this really wasn't for me. Maybe if you are a plot reader, you would enjoy it. Maybe if you're someone who doesn't necessarily need their magic systems to be like super fleshed out, you would enjoy it. But overall, I think this was one of the most disappointing books I've read all year. Okay, I ranted about those two books for a very, very long time. I just need to get it out. I'm just gonna take a few breaths. And now we're gonna have a very normal conversation about a sci-fi book that I read by Ursula K. Le Guin called The Left Hand of Darkness. This one I've been wanting to read for such a long time because the premise of this book is so cool and I finally got around to it. So this is a classic sci-fi about like a man who goes to this different earth, a different planet. It's a genderless society and the story really is about this bond that starts growing between these two people. One, the man from like our earth that ends up in on this genderless planet and a person from this genderless planet. And they kind of have to travel together. And you can see how the fact that they come from such different cultures with such different ideas about gender, that this really impacts the way that they communicate and the way that they think about the world. It really touches on the theme of like a barrier of communication where it shows how much of our communi- like you and I, <laughs> our communication styles are based on 
our own gender and the gender of the person that we're talking to, that it really influences how we position ourselves. And you can kind of see this main character, this human main character, con he's basically kind of sexist. <laughs> he's constantly categorizing everything based on gender, even if it like has nothing to do with gender. He'll look at like the banquet and like the cookings that have been organized and like sees them as like feminine when it's food. It's just food. <laughs> but this is something that I think us humans do all the time. We look at things and we subconsciously kind of like gender them or see them as masculine and feminine. Whereas the people on this planet don't do that at all. And while you read this book, you see that it's causing this kind of barrier of communication between these people and it's so interesting. And that's not even to speak about how this book explores what a culture looks like if there is no gender. For example, because these genderless people still do have to reproduce, they have kind of like a reproduction cycle where once every month or two months they become reproducible. <laughs> Basically, they become either masculine or feminine and they are capable of making babies. And because of this cycle, you can like take time off of work or things like that. Basically, the entire society is built around this cycle. That was just like one example of something that I found interesting of like, oh, it really makes sense that you would have an entire society built around the cycle of the humans living in your society. Wow, wouldn't it be great? if our humanity did that too. Oh, we don't do that because it's just the women cycling. However, I will say, however much I can go on praising how interesting the ideas presented in this book are, I, I cannot lie, I struggle to get through this one. The plot is really, 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 really boring. And I guess this is kind of standard for sci-fi from that time. This was published in 1969. The characters aren't particularly interesting and the plot, I genuinely could not get myself to care about it. There's like a political intrigue plot going on. We see these two main characters having to travel together. So like a third of the book is just dedicated to them having to travel through the snow. It just really wasn't for me. Like I could not get myself to care about this because I was just like, I'm here for the ideas. If you want me to care about the plot, you have to make the characters interesting. But that also didn't quite happen. I really feel like I would have loved this book a lot more if it was a novella or maybe even a short story a very long short story. If the story had just been kind of boiled down to just its interesting ideas and then, oh it sounds really horrible to say this, but to just like leave out the plot, I think I would have absolutely adored this book. But because I had to kind of struggle through the plot of the book to get through the interesting parts, I have a really hard time rating this book and I don't know how to rate this. I would recommend this book. I genuinely am so happy that I read this book. It's so interesting. But yeah, it's 300 pages and half of that is just spent on a plot that I thought was very lackluster. I will say, last thing I want to say, if you are going to read this book, if you are someone who is very attracted to this idea of like a book that explores the concept of a genderless society, do read this. But little warning, this is one of those sci-fi books where it like the first 50 pages you're gonna be bombarded with random sci-fi things <laughs> and sci-fi words. And it's one of those sci-fi books where you really don't have to understand everything that you're reading. Don't worry if you're confused. You don't have to understand what's going on 100% of the time. Just kind of like sit back and be taken along this little journey. Okay. And then the last three books that I read, if you've seen my last video, you already know what I'm talking about, but I read the All For The Game trilogy, starting with the Foxhole Core. I have like a full two hour in-depth video about this, but I'll give you like the non-spoiler part here. This is a book series that has kind of a cult following. I remember especially like five years ago seeing this everywhere on Tumblr especially. It's a self-published like sports drama series about this like made-up sport called Exe, which is kind of similar to lacrosse. And it's just a very, very 
unhinged story where you follow like the edgiest of edgy main character joining the sports team and kind of having to you know go from like the sports team being really bad to eventually you know getting better and better all of the characters have the most horrendous just traumatizing imaginable backstory ever just generally really bad <laughs> It's one of those books that just depicts mental health in an incorrect way. It constantly uses trauma and abusive backstories to make the story edgier and sadder. It's not particularly well written because it's, it's self-published and clearly hasn't really been edited. But I understand why it's so popular. It just brainwashes you. I don't know what these books do to a person but it can't be good for your body. <laughs> I was extremely invested in this series and I had a great time, which sounds absolutely weird after everything I just said, which is why I made the two hour video. If you wanna experience what I've experienced while reading these books without having to actually read the entire 900 page trilogy yourself, you can watch the two hour video that I made on it, where I just basically take you along, tell you what the books are about, what's happening in them, give my own little dramatic presentation of them, and give my commentary on it. So <laughs> if you want to watch that, I will link it like somewhere. And everyone in the fandom knows that these books are bad. They are, they objectively are, and yet they just they grab you by the metaphorical throat and pull you down under and before you know it, you care about all these characters and are crying over their little found family. It's really weird. So I, I really cannot properly review these books. I just can't. It's a very good example of one of those books where your brain just kind of shuts off, you know it's bad, and you still enjoy it. And sometimes I think there should be room for that as well. <laughs> the ebook of the first book, The Foxhole Court, is free, by the way. So just putting that out there. <laughs> I'm in a bit of a reading slump, probably because my mind can currently only process things that have to do with good omens to show. Maybe I should just read the book. I don't know if I'm ready to do that. <laughs> Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought about them. I'm super excited for all of the fall content that's gonna come in the upcoming weeks. Subscribe if you wanna see that and make sure you don't miss any of that. Cool, okay, I wanna take this moment to thank all of my lovely patrons for supporting me with a special shout out to all of the elite aided library members that you can see right here i really hope that you enjoyed this video i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i will see you soon in another video very soon goodbye <laughs>